Joining me now, Sal Mercogliano, maritime historian at Campbell University. It is great to have you on the show. We know heavy lift cranes have arrived and more are on the way. How long do you think it will take to clear the port? We can imagine a massive undertaking. Yeah, the first effort is going to be in moving the ship with the bridge on top of the bow. That's going to be the hardest effort right now. That's the focus of the salvage operation. Once the ship is removed, which could take up to a week or two for them to get the material away, to stabilize the vessel, get it out, then they'll work on the effort of removing the bridge from the main channel. But we're probably looking at about a month till we can see the opening of that channel at the earliest. They're going to try to get as narrow a passage as they can through it to start moving ships through. Digging into to the specifics of this, if we can, who do you think should be in charge of the salvage operation to just ensure to make sure things move in a coordinated way. So the captain of the port, which is the senior Coast Guard captain, oversaw the salvage of the Ever Forward. This is the ship that grounded off Baltimore two years ago. He's been designated again as the unified commander. The problem is this is a threefold salvage operation. You have the salvage on the ship, you have the salvage in the channel, and then you have the bridge salvage. And I would envision that eventually they're going to put more senior person in charge over this just because you're dealing with multi-jurisdictional, commercial, military. Uh, there's a lot of agencies at play here. Plus, there's going to be a lot of high visibility on this, especially with an election year coming up. So you may see a senior Coast Guard admiral come in. Back when we had Deepwater Horizon, they actually brought a former commandant of the Coast Guard in to be the overall incident commander. Reports for such incidents take a year to come out. I mean, by then people forget about the losses incurred. What do you think needs to be done here? Well, I think we need to start eliminating what it can't be, and I think that's really important. There are issues regarding what caused the power outage, what were the actions taken by the ship's pilots and the crew on board. We can get that information fairly quickly. They should be doing the depositions of them. They should be gathering that evidence. There's no reason that information like that can't get out, especially because there are ships right now going under bridges similar to this every day. And if this was a fault of the ship, if there was an issue that could be remedied before a another accident happens, we need to have that information now, not a year or two years from now. Sal Mercagliano, thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me.